everybody. Hopefully you guys are having an awesome day. I appreciate you coming back for another video. So let's talk about boas and the boa family. And we're just going to keep it simple because there's so much information out there. And we're not going to talk about localities or morphs. We're going to keep it simple on the common boa where you would find pretty much this exact same one in the jungles of South America. So boas do range from Mexico all the way down to the bottom of South America. Um, but I think just the basic comments, we're just talking about these ones in South America. Tromps it through the jungles. You see one of these in the trees or you might step on one pretty much. So this is my 2016 common boa. Um, you know, she could be a little bit bigger. She could be a little bit smaller depending on people's feeding regiments. And, um, you know, everybody likes to feed their bows just a little bit different. And there's nothing wrong with that. As long as they're healthy and thriving well, then every, everything's okay. So I'm not an expert on this topic. I'll never claim to be. I don't want to be because I like learning new things about animals and uh, different snakes and stuff like that. So let's talk about the differences and compare the boa family. And I'm, we're just gonna talk about the green anaconda and the common boa. I don't know anything about yellows anacondas, so I'll not give anybody inf any information on snakes that I have not personally owned because that would be very wrong of me to do. So I posted a picture of Pop-Tart, my green anaconda, which you guys probably know on Instagram. And you gotta love open platforms on the internet where anybody can come in there. So I don't know if this guy was trolling or if he was actually being serious and he didn't know the difference, but I hashtagged the anaconda as a boa and a boa constrictor. I could hashtag ball python for all I care just to get picked up on an algorithm on, on something. Uh, so he wanted to say that the anaconda was not a boa. And in fact, it is part of the boa family. Um, so we're, we're gonna talk about the boas they do give live birth. They can have, well, all slugs or one, but they can have up to 50. And I think any green anacondas can even have more than that. So not all of those will survive in the wild. We all know how nature works. Um, but it's just interesting how some people uh, don't know some stuff and then they spout off uh, just random stuff that they think they know. And I'm not judging anybody, I'm just here to help people out. So the, the so these are the comparisons of the boa family. So boa constrictor, they do look a lot different. So she is grays, browns, her belly's a little grayish, a little white in some spots. She's got spots all over her. She has these nice saddles on her. Uh, her tail is a little red or rusty looking. So their tails are a lot brighter when they're younger. And then once they age, they fade out and then their colors change just a little bit, a little bit darker. But uh, temperament's fine. I've had no, no problems with her on a temperament. Out of her cage, when she's in her cage, she can be a little home defensive and she'll strike and she'll hiss and stuff like that. But uh, she has a good personality. Uh, people are looking on another snake besides ball pythons. I would say get a boa as a baby. They don't get massive. Um, and they take a couple years for them to grow, so boas do like to climb. So she's constantly looking upward. She just shed out, so she's looking pretty good. Um, so she will always try to go to the highest points. So this is not stargazing, this is just her wanting to go up there. So if I build her something, a climbing area, like a jungle gym or something like that, she'll always go to the very top point. So I think they do like to live in the, uh, in the tops of the trees mostly. So they do like to eat birds, rodents. They might eat fish on occasions. I've never given them fish. I would assume they would eat one if they wanted to or if they needed to, but basically rodents are perfectly fine. Birds, if you want to give them a treat or something like that, I mean, they would find birds in the jungles, so they would definitely eat that as well. Um, let's talk about length. So depends on genes, depends on feeding regimen, and it depends on male or female, I would say, let's just rough guess, 
on the small side of a male, five and a half feet, maybe pushing somewhere between five and six, let's just say that. And on the high side of a female, let's say, let's say 10 feet. We can give it 11, because I'm sure there's people out there who do have an 11 footer. Um, but I would be very skeptical if somebody has a common that's 13 or more. I would love to see that on a measurement. I'm sure there's a very, very small amount that have that. I would say it's probably rare. I could, I could be 100% wrong on that. But if you can measure a 13, 14, or 15 BOA on a tape measure, I would love to see that. I would love to see it. So, um, you know, people, people that own snakes or know people that own snakes, the lengths are kind of like fishing stories. <laughs> uh, my buddy's uncle had a 16 foot common boa. Well, okay, all right, he didn't, but I'll, you know, you just go along with them so you don't point that out and make them look uh, a little foolish, but we all know that a boa constricted, a common boa, not talking about localities or anything like that, um, they're not gonna be 16 feet. But body size, she's gonna get a little thicker. Um, she might grow another two or three feet. But I think she's gonna probably be about nine nine feet, maybe, maybe we'll we'll see. So um, the temperatures, and I'll probably talk about the same thing with the anaconda when I take her out. Um, the temperatures, I I the exact same on on both of them. They're both from the same area, the same basin in South America. It gets really hot. It gets super humid. So. 65 and higher in the humidity. Um, it is like stagnant air in here. I do run the fan sometimes, so there's not a lot of wind uh, flow like there would be in nature. So I, I try to keep it around 85 degrees. Now, I do have a, you know, I do heat the room ambient, um, but on the, on the Anaconda, I do, since her cage is on the floor, I do run a radiant heat panel because in the winter times, you know, hot air rises and it's difficult. The, the floor is cold, so the cage gets cold. So that's the only reason why I have an ambient on hers, uh, just to help her out a little bit, but it's nothing crazy. I still think it's still set at like 87, maybe 85 on the thermostat. So it's nothing crazy. Um, and I would say, other than the colors, the patterns, and the size of an anaconda, which we'll talk about with her, there's really not much difference. There's really not, just size. So caging is different. I have her in a four footer. She could be in a six. And I have pop tart in an eight, which debatable on <laughs> um, what, what that should be, what an anaconda should be in. But uh, again, I would not go off. I mean, it's very skeptical of what Google puts out there, what people talk about on Google, because unless people actually own them or have experience with them, um, I don't know, it's just, it's just hard to read some of this stuff. And a lot of people will give out their two cents who have never owned a boa or owned an anaconda. And then they'll spout off all the stuff that they were told, what their uncle told them, what they saw in Hollywood movies, or what National Geographic is falsifying. So we'll put her back. Um, I know I'm talking babbling. And then we'll get out the anaconda. And then we'll talk about her just, just a little bit. Okay, so now we have Pop-Tart out here, and Pop-Tart is just coming out of her blue phase on Shed. I can feel kind of bad picking her up right now because she doesn't look that great, and hopefully she's not in a bad mood because of how bad she feels trying to break out of her new skin. So she is soaking wet, so I did pull her out of her water dish. Um, so there's a lot of misinformation on anacondas, and I know I tell you guys this all the time, but Google is the worst source I'll just say the internet is the worst source for anything that you want to know about anacondas. If you Google an anaconda, it says they get up to 35 feet, they weigh 600 pounds, yada, yada, yada. So it's very difficult to see these snakes or have these snakes even touch 16 or 17 feet. Um, seeing professional breeders, professional owners, um, you guys probably know who I'm talking about. I'm not going to name any names because I don't want to you know, leave this person out and you guys say another person, but you guys know who I'm talking about. Majority of the people who own adult females, they're like 15 feet ish. Maybe not even that, 14, 15 feet. Uh, they probably weigh 150 pounds ish, maybe 200, but they're lean. 
They look good. Um, they're a good size. Now, I don't know if breeding has an impact on that, but from what I hear, it's very difficult to see uh, fine anacondas that are, you know, super massed, like complete giants, unless you're just pumping fatty foods into them. Pigs every week, guinea pigs are the worst for them. Um, I have seen people with anacondas that are big, like just massive, um, but they were super sick and they had a lot of issues with them and eventually they ended up dying. I mean, they probably lived, you know, 15 to 20 years, which is not a bad lifespan, but towards the end of their life, they just had a lot of medical issues. So trying to stay away from that with her, feeding her pretty lean. She's going to get big no matter what. Um, but that's the one thing that on um, big snakes, going off topic of the, the boas, berms and retics, you can pump those things full of food because when we keep even in, in encounters or regular boas in captivity, they just sit around and they don't burn off the calories. They don't burn off the fat. They just store it. And then we just keep pumping them full of food, full of food. So an adult anaconda could probably eat twice a year or three times a year, depending on where you're feeding it. Um, but everybody wants massive snakes to show off to the internet and they don't care about their health. They don't care about their well-being. As long as you can pump you know, an anaconda up 15 feet in three years or five years, then you're, you know, you get the internet status about having this huge snake, but then lots of negativity. So anacondas, again, are they are in South America. They are in the wetlands. They, they like to travel through the bodies of water. Uh, I think because they're so heavy, it, it makes it easier for them and it's less energy to go through water than fighting through land on a big bodied animal. Uh, they eat everything. They eat birds, fish, um, rodents and pigs and even down in South uh, America they even eat uh, probably crocodiles and everything else. I don't think boas eat crocs, maybe caimans, maybe caimans. Uh, I know they can eat birds as well. On the keeping of them, I keep the boas, they are boas, I mean boa constrictors and boa anaconda the exact same. The humidity is 65 and up. I'll spray them down here or there just to simulate um, I hire peak because it is very, very wet and humid in where the natural area is. Um, you know, heating 85-ish. Um, I do have a hot spot for her because she does have a cage on the ground. I don't know if we can really see that. Oh, you guys have seen it in past videos. I'm messing up this whole tripod right here. So her cage is on the ground. And in the winter time, it gets cold on the ground and then we all know how it rises. So because she's on the ground, I do have an extra rated heat panel just to keep her warmer. That's really it. Um, it's set at 85 degrees. I'm sure I could bump it up a little bit more, but she seems perfectly fine, perfectly healthy with that. Um, really the, the difference of them is just weight. Um, I've seen professionals keep these in eight by threes with just a little water dish. I'm not here to judge anybody. From what I've seen on most breeders and most big time people who own anacondas, I mean, other than people who have a zoo, which is perfectly fine, they say in an eight by three or an eight by four, and rarely do they have a big enough area to swim in or soak in, and they're super healthy. They breed fine. They, you know, they're healthy animals. They do what they're supposed to do. They're um, thriving. I guess you could say they're not living, but they're thriving. But anytime we take an animal throw it in a box, no matter if it's a bird or a, a dog or a snake, we're taking the living away from them and then we're just thriving them through their life cycles. So I guess it's bad to own these anyways, but whatever. Um, so attitude, as you can see, they're both perfectly fine. I don't have any issues with them. I, I do interact with them constantly, daily. So they do know me. If they were to bite me, it would be something that I did wrong. Um, but, you know, I would say there's really no difference about them other than the adult size. So she is almost three. So we can see the size on the both of them. She's growing up a lot quicker, a lot faster. But I think she might be a little bit longer or the same length but she's not as girthy. Now that again, that all depends on your, your personal feeding schedule. I have seen some three-year-old anacondas that are pretty 
pretty massive. <laughs> so um, this is just going off how I'm keeping them and just what I'm doing. But I highly suggest if you have ball pythons and you want to get into something a little bit better with more personality that gets a little bit bigger, get a boa constrictor. If you wanted something even bigger than that and retics are way too big for you, I mean, they have, they have the super dwarfs and the dwarfs and stuff like that. You guys get a berm. Everybody overlooks this because they think that they need a gigantic swimming pool. Would they like that? Yes. Do they need it? They don't need it. Um, and like I said, they don't get as large as Google and Hollywood and all these other places say. But, uh, um, you know, I'm just rambling now. But they're basically the exact same thing. They're both boas. They're, this one's just bigger. That's it. They don't need anything special other than the boa, except the bigger cage. But obviously that that's going to come with the territory of, of owning it. So the differences are very minute. Um, and then if you are going to get an anaconda, you should already know that they're going to get big anyways. So uh, that's it. Hopefully you guys learned something. I'm not an expert. <laughs> I feel like sometimes I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just going with the flow here with the animals, feeding them, giving them you know, humidity, cleaning up their poop, and that's about it. All speaking of poop, so one big thing about the anaconda difference is anacondas poop a lot, and they pee a lot, like daily a lot. So if you do want one, be prepared to change out the water or the substrate or whatever, wherever they're pooping or peeing, pretty much every day. And then with the boa constrictors, I don't have that issue. It's more likely once a week, basically about a week after they eat, but... I don't know how their digestive thing is or if they just like to poop, uh, but they poop all the time. They poop a lot. So there's another uh, difference is their bowel movement. So get ready for that. Uh, but that's it, guys. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed that little bit of a difference. And I know it's lengthy and I do apologize, um, but I kind of ramble on and on as stuff goes. So that's it. Enjoy your day. Enjoy the video. See you on the next one.